I got my associates at St. Louis Community College at Florissant Valley, and then I did the RN to BSN program at UMSL. I went to nursing school at what now, or it's Gold Farm now, but it was Barnes Jewish College when I went. So it was like a one building right across the street from the hospital. Um, and there were only like four classrooms in it. <laughs> and I got my associates um, in nursing there. I went to Chamberlain College of Nursing. I did an undergrad at the community college for two years, and then I transferred there just to finish up nursing school courses. Nursing school was not easy. Um, I learned a lot there, but I learned more once I got out of nursing school on the floor. Nursing school was hard because I was trying to balance having a full-time job here as a tech and then going to school full-time and so I did never had any time to do anything but school or work, school or work. And I was always exhausted. And it was challenging, but it was worth it in the end. Like, I was so happy. I don't think I've been happier in my life than when I had my graduation from nursing school, not even my first degree. It was like, yay, no more. <laughs> What inspired me to work in pediatrics and oncology? Um, I've always loved children, um, so I've always wanted to work in pediatrics. And then it just kind of happened that my sister-in-law worked here on this floor at the time, and they had openings, and I was a PCT at another hospital. And so she asked if I wanted to work here, and of course I was like, yeah, I've always wanted to work in pediatrics. Um, and so I started working here on the floor on this floor and then I just fell in love with it. I didn't really want to do oncology per se, but it just kind of happened that it fell into place and I've been here ever since. I applied for every position here and it's really difficult to get a job here. Um, and then while I was in orientation, I got a call from here. And so I never thought that I would do pediatric oncology. It sort of just picked me and I started 12 years ago and have never left. So I read this newspaper article whenever I was like 11 years old and I have no idea why I remembered this but it said um, they interviewed a pediatric oncology nurse and she said for, um, she said I work with kids all day and everyone always asks me why and she says and they always tell me it's the hardest thing that you'll ever do and she's like but for my 12 hour shift if I can get them to smile for 5 minutes of 12 hours and for just one of those minutes they forget that they have cancer then I feel like my day is complete. And that had just always stuck with me. I always knew that I wanted to be a nurse. My mom's a nurse. Um, and I always like loved her, listening to her stories and how she helps people. And then after I read that article, I was like, that's what I wanna do. And so that was my goal. And as soon as I graduated nursing school, I got a job here on the ninth floor. The first day I was working on the floor by myself, um, I can remember being very, very scared. Um, I remember thinking, I have to go in and do this all by myself, because you always had someone with you in orientation. Um, but I just told myself, okay, you gotta keep that inside when you go in the patient's rooms. Um, and I just remember second guessing a lot of the things that I did. Um, but I was reassured because really we have support from all the people around us so I just kept telling myself if you're worried you have all these people to ask go back and ask them. I learned early on that questions are always okay to ask and that everyone feels more comfortable once you ask questions. Um, I definitely felt like I was really slow and then I couldn't do or keep up but that just takes time and I got more comfortable every single day. We get a new family that's just coming up to the floor for the first time um, when they get a diagnosis. Um, I try to just go in the room and introduce myself, 
I orient take them to the room and the environment, but most of the time they're so overwhelmed that I really try to explain to them that people are all going to come in at once and tell you a million things, but you don't have to remember that because I'm here to do that for you. Let them know what's going on, what the plan will be. I kind of give them a tour of the floor where the nutrition room is. This is show them the moose menu, how to order, where the call light is, where the nurse's station is, where I'll be sitting. Um, and just ask them if they have any questions or anything I can do for them. Once they get here on the floor, I think it's very important to like acclimate them on, you know, we've got refreshments here, you know, and I also like to, a lot of times families don't understand, even as a nurse sometimes, I don't understand who's the first person that I go to. Do I go to a nurse practitioner? Do I go to a resident? What is a nurse practitioner? What is a resident? Who's a fellow? What's an attendant? Like, I think that those are very important people to point out to the family and knowing and also knowing that they can always come to me or other nursing staff if they have any questions. Um, but showing them around the floor, making them feel comfortable. A lot, of, I mean, you know, we have little kids running around here all the time and I feel like that always helps families realize that like things are gonna be all right. Like, you know, things are gonna go okay up here. I think the most challenging part of being a pediatric oncology nurse is separating yourself, separating your personal life and your professional life because the line gets blurred when you're taking care of kids who are really, really ill and you become the support for the parents and they reach out to you because you're the only one they have. But keeping that line where you're not giving so much of yourself that you're not able to continue to do this, it took me a really long time to learn that. Um, the other thing is just watching the families go through the hardest time that they will ever go through in life, you know, watching their face whenever they are diagnosed. That's, it's just gut-wrenching. It doesn't matter how many times that you watch it. And then, you know, once they hear just how diagnosis is going or if there's a relapse or things like that, those are just things that will always stick with you, like, no matter what. And then once you see that family in the hallway, like, you know, you want to, I want to be the bright, bubbly person that I always am, but I know that that's not what they need at that time. I mean, you just want them to get better, and it's a process. It's not immediate. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be the most challenging. It's always difficult when a, a kid dies, especially um, but we take care of them over long periods of time and you get to know them. Um, I mean, I try to just think that even if I wasn't here, that kid would have still been sick and probably would have still passed away. So I'm lucky to be able to get to be a part of one of the most intimate parts of a person's life. Um, like I said, it's that whole compartmentalization thing. You have to try to figure out um, how emotionally involved to get because you want to be there for the family and you want it to be real. And, um, but also you have to save that for yourself too. One of the parents one time asked me, is it against your guys' rules to cry up here? Because you, you guys never cry, even when sad events go on. And I simply told the dad, like, we all have our time and our place. A lot of us, it's in the car on the way home. But some of us, it's in the med room with a friend, you know. Um, on the elev We all like to usually do it in private because we feel like we need to be the support system for the family more than the family needs to support us. Because we've got a good support system here throughout our nursing friends. I mean, it's sad. It is. It's hard. But um, once you've been here for so long, you kind of learn to separate that, like, life, I don't know, life with most of the time it's expected, so you kind of like prepare yourself for it, but it's still hard. Most of the time, the kids will kind of know that they're getting worse and worse, so it's not like you have to all of a sudden say goodbye. There's, there's time for us to process in our heads that the kid is probably going to pass away, 
Um, for me, for the kids that I've taken care of for long periods of time, I like to be here when it happens because it's my way of being able to close that loop and say goodbye. Plus, it's, sometimes it's easier for the families if they have a person that they know. Um, and so, I mean, it's really difficult in general when any kid dies, but I think we're supported well and I work with really, really great people. So if I didn't have that, I don't know that I could keep doing this. It's a great feeling when your patient's cancer free, you know, you um, had part in that by helping them give them chemo and take care of them for so long. Um, so it's really probably one of the, actually the most rewarding part of the job, I would say. The end of chemo bell. Um, so when a, a kid gets their last chemotherapy, what happens is, is that all of us gather around this bell and they're allowed to ring it. Um, we sing a congratulations song to them. Um, when they're finished, and then they get a diploma and a gift. Um, it's pretty amazing, and I think one of the things that I like about the chemo bell is that with new diagnosis families, they can look and see this person's ringing the bell. There is some end to what I'm starting, um, so it's pretty great. What do you want to say to everybody? Thank you. Well, I'm going to read this to you, all right? Okay. Wait, wait, he has to ring it first. So this certifies that Will Bartold, with oh. undaunting courage, has completed chemotherapy and is therefore awarded this diploma, given at St. Louis Children's Hospital in the state of Missouri on March 12th, 2017. <laughs> Bell is such an exciting time up here. Um, we've had patients, current and recently, who were, they were diagnosed around the same time. They went through the chemo steps all together. They were admitted around the same time as each. One got to ring the bell last week, and he is around the age of two, and the other admits around the age of two, and he said, yay, good job, good job. He was like there cheering his little pal on that has gone through everything with him, and then Hopefully he'll get to ring the bell um, at the end of next week. Also, whenever the bell, um, someone rings the bell, there's a billboard on 44 that actually goes off so that people outside the hospital or anyone who's driving by can um, or knows that someone finished chemotherapy. Taking care of kids that are dealing with a, a cancer diagnosis is actually the most fun thing in the world. <laughs> One of the things I can't stand is when I go out and people ask, well, what, what do you do? And I say, I'm a pediatric oncology nurse. And they say, oh, that must be so sad. Oh, it's horrible. No, it's not sad at all, really. I mean, taking care of kids um, is fun because even if they're sick, they might throw up, but then they want to play. I think the one thing that people don't understand about kids that are diagnosed with cancer is that the kids are still kids. They, that is the number one thing when people ask me how I do what I do. Kids don't act sick. You know, they might, when they're nauseous from chemo, they might be like, oh, my belly hurts, but I want a popsicle. They could not feel good for five minutes, but then you show them Nemo and they're happy as a clam. You can give them a toy and they run around here and they ride in wagons and it's not like they show it on TV where they're all sitting in beds and it's so depressing. No, it's actually really, really fun most of the time. Lots of times we're trying to just give medicine in between playing with the kids, so. That doesn't stop them from wanting to go to the playroom or the garden or to run around the halls. Like, they have bad days and those are really hard to watch, especially after you've seen 
multiple good days, but I always tell parents that they're still gonna have their little their little guy or little girl. They're it's they're the same person and they will they'll come back around. The relationships that we have with our patients is unique because we see them so often and so frequently and we're there with them through their the hardest time of their lives. So we um, get to know them personally about their families. They get to know um, us and our families and um, there's just a really unique bond that a lot of other types of nursing doesn't get. The happy moment that I witnessed on the floor would have to be when um, one of our patients who is about one years old, mom was out of the room, um, I think downstairs getting food, so she came out to the nurse's station with me and another nurse, and we knew that she liked trolls, so um, on our phones, the other nurse had the um, Can't Stop the Feeling song on her phone, so we played that and we for dancing with her for that the whole song and she was just like giggling and loving life and we were loving life too. Um, well for me, um, some of the happiest moments are I um, can infuse the stem cells um, for bone marrow transplant and sometimes I won't have even met a family before and I walk in and I do their actual bone marrow transplant and um, it's pretty amazing. You get to give them new life and so um, I've done that a handful of times, um, but the people don't forget you at all. They'll always remember, even if I've only met them, and they, they think like that I'm saving their lives, which it, we are all are, but it's pretty amazing whenever you can look at just a bag that looks like blood, and you know that you're giving someone their new bone marrow and their new life, and then they won't have to be here anymore, and they'll be able to go out and live a long, happy life. Whenever I get off work, I come home, take a shower, sometimes have a glass of wine, and then by that time it's usually nine o'clock, so my day is done. Probably the hardest thing about working on such an emotional floor is that you bring it home inevitably. There's no way around it. Um, whenever I've had a hard day at work, my fiance is the first one to know about it, and he's the first one that always says, like, you chose this job. However, my mom is also a nurse, and so, her and I, a lot of times, will like call on the way home from work and just compare on how hard our days were and things like that. So my mom is a really good support system whenever it comes to being too emotionally overwhelmed from work because she's used to the same type of job. They're super supportive, and I think that they know that this is where I want to be and where my personality works best for me is at the hospital with young children. We are um, teaching the doctors. I mean, it used to be, I think, where all we did was, or all nurses did back in the day, was wear white outfits and hats and follow the doctor's orders, but not anymore. I mean, it has become a growing profession, and um, like I said, lots of times I'm teaching the doctors how to care for patients. With the electronic charting, and I feel like nurses probably back in the day was more focused on the task, and nurses now are more involved in the whole like family and the well-being of the patient. The last line too before anything gets to the patient 
And so we're expected to be the last check to know all the stuff about medicines, dosing. And so I think it's a lot more challenging than it was like 10 years ago even. Medicine's evolving every day and I think that nursing is as well. Um, I think that nurses are at the bedside more and you know, people reach out a lot more and have more confidence in a nurse. Nurses are now getting more recognition for the good things that they do. Working with children um, with cancer has taught me that life is, can be short um, and can change in, in an instant so that you really do have to appreciate what you have. To appreciate the little things, a lot of, people, of us take things for granted, um, things that you don't even think about until you get put in a hard situation like that. What inspires me the most is knowing that I'm gonna come here and see all the little kids' bright smiling faces and in hopes that you know I get to see an exciting ceremony like a bell ringing ceremony or um, for a parent to hear that their kid is free of disease. But inevitably, I come here just to try to make kids smile and do my job as a nurse. What inspires me to get up and come here every day would be just the patients and families that I take care of and knowing that even though I don't see it immediately, I am making a difference. One of the reasons I love working here is if I walk in here, um, you know, my life is good and these people have to deal with these hard, challenging things on a daily basis and they can still put a smile on their face. So it helps for, to me to be able to put a smile on my face every single day.